Our story began in 1991. Over time, the mortgage industry has experienced many changes, but our core values here at CIS have always remained the same. Character, integrity, and service. You don't need to be a mortgage expert to get a great financial plan. You just need to work with one. Our focus and dedication have allowed us to help thousands of families reach their dream of home ownership, whether it be refinancing your current home, buying a manufactured home, or purchasing investment property, we have a product for you. We invite you to find out more by visiting our website at cishomeloans.com or like us on Facebook. CIS Home Loans, mortgage loans made simple, equal housing lender. Hey, our uh, six o'clock hour has arrived and it's time to call our meeting to order. We appreciate each of you from our community being with us tonight and uh, we'll be uh, hearing from some of you uh, a little later. Uh, we want to stand together at this time and have an invocation on our pledge before we get started. Now, Father, we pause at this time just to give you thanks for another good day in this life. Lord, we thank you for the community that we reside in. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you pour out upon us daily. We ask you, Lord, to continue with us and Help us to overcome this virus that continues to plague us. Lord, we don't know how long the duration will be, but help us to do our best during this time. Lord, be with us in this meeting tonight. Always uh, look favorably, Lord, on this community, if it be in your will. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and you may be seated. A couple of weeks ago, I heard from our board member, Ms. Belinda McRae, and she said she and Ms. Joyce Fowler would like to uh, come to this meeting tonight and address our group. So uh, we'll hear from our Board of Education members at this time. Well, we'll be short and sweet. We just came to thank you for supporting Hamilton Schools with the alcohol tax. We really appreciate that. Yeah. We do. We appreciate it. And the principals do and the kids do. And it's made a lot of difference. And we do thank you for renewing that this <coughs> We're glad we could help out with that matter. Thank you, John. Uh, we are convened, so before we start our official council meeting tonight, we have uh, a public hearing. This public hearing is to allow any person the opportunity to speak either for or against the rezoning of property owned by Mr. Watha Williams, located on 2nd Avenue also known as Baby Street. Uh, property owner has asked the property to be rezoned from R1, which is a residential district, to R2, which is for multiple, multi-family district. I believe this property address is 641 2nd Avenue Southwest. Uh, would anyone like to start our hearing this this evening. I will, Mayor. Okay, Mr. Williams wants to address the crowd. If you'll just come to the podium. Okay. Um, there is my, I, think. I, I won't need oh, it, I don't think. All these people are very good. Uh, yeah, this, this property right here, I've owned it several years, and uh, uh, I'd like to put an apartment building there. It consists of uh, five apartments, one bedroom apartment. And uh, the reason I, you know, just looking at it, I think it's ideal for that. Uh, and I was shocked when I came down here to start the paperwork on the find it wasn't zoned for that. I mean, I was literally shocked. Uh, being, you know, it's got a housing project located within 90 foot of it on the east side. Got a housing project there. Going up the street about uh, 
2,000 feet, and you got another housing project right there. Going around the street there, about 10 blocks, you got one of the largest first housing projects, not only the second one we're at in Hamilton. I mean, it's a large one. Back down in town, uh, three blocks down, you have uh, about 300 uh, people living in rooming houses. That's a three, about three blocks down. Uh, also, a couple of blocks down, you have a barber shop, and now you have a uh, fruit stand there. Uh, and then when I found out it was just zoning like it was, I was just totally surprised. Uh, if, if you went straight across north of there, just across the line there, one block, there's a converted motel that's a rooming house. It's a rooming house for the ramps, what it's for. Uh, back down the street, right into the town there, we have an abandoned, uh, I guess it was a dentist office all my life right there, you know. It's still standing. You have the gas office across the street from it. So, uh, I see no reason that there couldn't be a uh, apartment building built there. I mean, you know, I told the zoning committee, if I built the thing, it would look good. I'm planning on building down the metal, and it'd be trimmed in creek rock. Uh, there'd be parking for the residents that live there. Uh, the street's fine, it can handle it. Uh, the sewer is there. Like J.H. Mitchell said one time, when I was on the council, why do you pass by a lot when it's got everything you need and then ask the city to go another half a mile and learn a field and do one. It's there. Why not use it? Uh, I don't know nobody that's going to be, I know, I know of two houses on that whole street right there that's extremely nice. But I don't see nobody going in there and building a house that this thing's going to hurt. I don't see it's going to hurt anyone that lives there. Uh, and I've got a, uh, I've got a great record on, on taking anything making it look good. 22 years ago, I bought the old jail property. I mean, it was just the ruins is all was left there. I mean, it was terrible. It was just partly standing, you know, growed up. There's a fruit stand right on the front of it. So I bought that whole property there, and uh, I finished burying the old jail. And I built my station there. Uh, it could use a little touch up right now, but it's looked good. It's looked as good as anything in Hamilton, I tell you that. Uh, time went along, and the old Church of Christ building, it went into bankruptcy. It was growed up, falling in. Um, I bought that thing, and I made 13 apartments out of it. And I think it looks good. The old parsonage around there, the roof had fell in on it. That wall was standing there. I bought it. I fixed it up. I think it looks good. The, old, the White House across the street there is where my daughter lives. Uh, it was run down, terrible. I bought that house, and you might look at it today. I think you'd think it looks good. Right on up the street there, on the, above the laundromat, had three buildings there, and the roof was literally laying on the concrete. I bought that property. And uh, if anybody's ever been in what we call the Molly Building, it looks good. You got to take your own horn. The Molly Building looks good. The downtown area looked terrible until I bought that property. Uh, I came to the city several times about the property. If you're standing over there at the Methodist Church and look across there, it looked terrible. It looks good now. Straight across the street from it, I bought two more buildings. They was terrible. They was full of junk. I'm telling you, rats, mosquitoes, and everything on the earth, we gutted those buildings out totally. Tore the roofs off of it totally. Had the walls standing there. I built eight apartments out of that building there and have a little warehouse also there. Uh, I think they look good. So, and then in the last two years, the property out there called the Cox property on 17. 
it was a rough situation right there. I went in there, same thing. Top caving in. I bought that property, cleaned it up, really cleaned it up. I got uh, five nice apartments there. So I, I don't understand anyone to think that what I touched, it wouldn't look good sooner or later, I tell you that. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what the if a built apartment building there, I don't know of a thing that it hurt. I mean, uh, and you can't look at it like this right here. I mean, it's not a private drive going up to nobody's house. It's a street. I mean, that's what you got to look at. It's a street right there for the public to use. It, it's not. It's not a public. I mean, it's not a driveway going up to nobody's house. It's there to be used. We get all the all the utilities there. Zoning board voted 100 percent that it looked good to them. So uh, I don't see no reason. That's my case to y'all, and that's my case to the audience. I have pictures of the whole, every building around there, if anybody would like to see them. But I, I, think, I think it was delivered quite well. Okay? Any questions for Mr. Yeah, Williams? Any <clears throat> I think you've stated your case well, yeah. Mr. Williams. Thank you. And we might come back to you a little sure. later. Sure. Who will be speaking for the uh, opposition. I'm going to attempt to do that there. Okay. It's been a long time since I stood in front of the group, but it feels a little bit familiar. But uh, for those of you that in the audience that don't know me, I know all this group here. I'm Braille Jackson. Uh, I want to thank the mayor and the council for the opportunity to come and to give you our concerns. Now, I don't live on the street, but I got a 95-year-old daddy and a 92-year-old mother that do. And that is, is important to me. Of course, this, as the mayor said, is a public hearing asking to be rezoned from R1 to R2. Um, and at this time, I'd like to give you a, if you would pass it around, a copy of petition and I think we could have filled up a bunch of pages if the COVID mess wasn't taking over right now and, and uh, the timeline that, that we've had. So that is a petition that's uh, been signed. As we've already said, this second street or second avenue southwest is what we old days call Baby Street. And you got to keep in mind that this property and this street is in the middle of town, two, three blocks from the courthouse. And you're never going to improve your town, and I've been told numerous times, being that I was in education, that three things people look at when they want to come to your, your town is appearance of the town, how clean it is, what it looks like, the hospital, if you've got a hospital and your school. Those are three things that people are really, really, really interested in when, when they're looking to come and to uh, locate, relocate, and we do have a lot of that. We have a lot of uh, ground students that uh, live in the dormitories, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's great. I think Karen has something like three or four of those dumb tours around the, around the town, mostly in the downtown area. Really, I want to talk to you about the, some of the concerns of people that live on this street as, as well as the people who want to see a better house. Now, I, I understand this would be probably Walter can answer that question. Section 8 housing? Zero. Zero, not correct. Section 8 housing ties your hands a lot. You have to rent to whomever, and uh, you really don't, the owner really doesn't have a lot to say about who he or she rents to. Recently, my wife and I drove out a local street called Wimpy Drive. 
one street back from Pleasant Ridge Church. No, see, that's not, that's not, I'd invite you to go out there and look. We've given you some pictures. A lot of them do. Of the, I thought it was uh, Lake Street there. Giving you some pictures of that's that area. Let me, uh, let me tell you just a little bit about that. Hey, excuse me. Yes, Where sir. is this actually located? What? That he's going to build his apartments. Up. Uh, you Maybe know where my dad, yeah, you know where my yeah. dad and mother lives. Well, I, I got messed up here when you were talking. I, I wasn't here and it called Baby Street and I wasn't here. Yeah, Second yeah. Avenue Southwest is what yeah. it's known yeah. that. And, but okay, it, it's, it's Baby Street. Yeah. Baby Street for About us. About halfway up there. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Uh, getting back to the, the situation of Wimpy Street, we went up made pictures and you've been given those pictures. Uh, when that area first came into being up there, I'm sure the city paved a, a small street out to the end at that time, the road. There were two brick houses on the right side of that street. Uh, Walker did pur purchase the property across the street in a pine thicket. And that, these are some of the pictures of those places. Uh, you get to that end of that pavement, there to the left, and it's really not a, a drive, it's really not a street, it's, it's dirt. No grass on the yards, junk in the yards, all kind of things like that. Basically, you've got mobile homes and the metal storage buildings put together with maybe a little hallway or a little porch out front is basically what you've got. I don't know how many people live there and I didn't count the number of mobile homes and those storage units. <clears throat> a little bit about Second Avenue or Baby Street. It's an old street. Baby Street and Lover's Lane used to be the two streets in Hamilton that were some of the prettiest in our in our town. We've got new homes that have been built on Baby Street. Owners that have spent a lot of money. You got homes that have been renovated on Baby Street. Owners have spent a lot of money. The people don't want to see their, their property devalued. Now if we're talking about a metal building that's what Walker has indicated. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of housing projects on it, but they're made out of stone. They're kept up well. Grass is mowed. Everything looks good. And I, I, I understand both those housing project units are really for the older people, but I think maybe that's changed somewhat since they went into being there. But let me ask you a question. Do you think a metal building with one bedroom apartments are going to add or subtract from the value of the surrounding properties? My personal answer to that question is that no, they're not going to, they're going to subtract from the value of the property that's around there. It definitely will subtract. From. Now, if this apartment complex is any indication of what the pictures that we've passed around to you, that this comes to look like down the road, then I don't think we need an apartment complex right downtown in the middle of Hamilton with junk in the yard, grass grown up, all those kind of things that it looks like is happening in, in some of, of, of Walker's other property. Now, I, I give him credit, he's a businessman, he's in it to make money, I understand that. And, uh, but I don't really think that we're, you know, and I'm not saying that you don't know, put brick or whatever, but I am saying the metal building is not conducive to that area of town. Especially, and folks, let me say this. It's not fair to the people 
who've already lived there and already spent their hard-earned money to build a new house and or to renovate their homes that, and, and that they've all invested in. As I said before, my dad and mother live on that street. And that, that's my personal worry. Uh, they have invested their hard-earned money in that house that they're in, that they renovated. And they're in the process of spending more on the house because of their age to put in a handicapped bathroom. It's probably going to cost them anywhere from ten to $15,000. My daddy worked for the state for 32 years. My mother worked in the, when she finally went to work, worked in the garment plants, Colgate and Munson Wear. So they, they're not people with a, <laughs> a high retirement income nor a lot of Social Security money. But apartments with one bedroom is not going to attract families in my estimation. It's going to attract single people, one or two people. Families with kids are not going to be living there. And if you don't have families in these apartments, it could possibly be property turn into a safety issue down the way for uh, that area. I know we've got problems in town, all towns do. We've got problems like all small communities have. You, you've got a small tax base and you have to live within your means. And therefore, you know, the safety factor to me worries me because of my parents and the other er elderly folks that live on that on that street. Uh, so the names that you see on the petition, as I said, I think we could have filled up. Charles Cochran said we would have, would have had to have this on the football field, but we had time to get to the names and because of COVID and other reasons. But the names that are, that are on there are at, asking you to deny this request. I appreciate you listening to me. And I appreciate the time that you, you will take to study this request from the people of 2nd Avenue Southwest and, and the surrounding area. We've got some signatures on there of people that don't actually live on that street, but just over a block. But I do appreciate the time and appreciate you listening to me. I'll be available for questions if anybody has any of me. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anyone else would want to address this issue? Yeah, I'll say a few words, if you would, please. Yes, sir. Come on up front. Yeah, just come up here. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, and most of you should know I have been on the Council. Uh, I'll, I'll refer back to uh, something that, that Brayton mentioned about safety and other things. Uh, most of you on the council, if you talk to your police department or chief, we got a problem with drugs. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what the uh, and what I mentioned, those uh, projects above us may even be some uh, creeping in to the uh, to the elderly and handicapped apartments right there by yeah. what we're talking about. But we've got a terrible problem with drugs. Uh, and uh, of course, the highway traffic is always bad at the side of the point. But in the last month, the foot traffic has picked up probably two or three hundred percent. And you can check this with your policemen. They know all about it. But, but it's coming from the projects. And they get out about halfway and they'll cut through between the yard, uh, and through the yards and behind the houses going to the liquor store. Now, I, I know when you say, well, that ain't got nothing to do with this situation. Well, Brad was just talking about one bedroom apartments. I think it does have something to do with this situation. And, and, and add to that, um, and I know there's good people living in housing projects. Don't get me wrong. There's some good uh, people living in housing projects. Um, but there's a lot of people, <coughs> it, it's a hotbed for drugs. And again, you can check with your police that they all that. We can see them three cars at a time, headed to the project, headed to the project. 
Uh, and Brave also referenced uh, safety. People that are more nervous, uh, they're elderly people uh, than they were six months ago because of the foot traffic. Uh, they don't, people, people don't feel the same. And, and you talk about the other, and we got to bring bad houses on the street. But if you just keep bringing in bad stuff, one of the, the existing bad stuff moves out, and something possibly really nice come in. But if you if you keep bringing in bad stuff, then it's always going to fall, and it always continue to be that way. Um, I talked to some up and down the street, a young family, small kids, and they bought and they paid a good bid for the property and their houses, and they uh, they did that under the assumption that they were primarily on that street would be a uh, one family dwelling, same family dwelling, but you know uh, that's just part of the situation. Uh, I guess I could say a lot more. Uh, and we've had some people down below me looking at property that, uh, and I can tell you their names, I won't, but they were considering building uh, large, nice houses there if it hadn't been uh, this is on another street except for the uh, old house next to 911. If they could have got all that property, they'd have spent a couple of hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars building a house there. But, uh, and showing, I guess I'm saying, that the people in that area don't want it. And another thing talking about safety, and single uh, bedrooms, as Ray will point it out, the, uh, the people that most likely would be living there. That property joins basically the bird nest, the daycare center. They might be a few different feet different from property line to property line, but it may join in the corner, I don't know. But that's another concern. And you look at all your, all the signatures and uh, look at it. This, this is bigger than I thought it would be, would be, and as far as opposition is concerned. I'm telling you, nobody back in that, I, I use that term figuratively, but nobody back in that corner wants it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Cochran? Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Anyone else uh, like to speak on this matter? Yes, sir. Mr. Clean. Hey, my name is James Clean. Most of y'all know me. Um, I live in a hundred year old house, just a couple houses down from where that's at. Got dope beds. There's more than one, just a couple nice houses on that street. <clears throat> dope beds up down the street all day. Watch them. And uh, don't need this coming in, don't want it. And if y'all gonna zone it for that, y'all go ahead and zone my pasture. I own that place, free, clear, got the deed. We'll, we'll, I'll do about 10 or 12 out there. And then we'll see, we'll just let it, then we'll rename it, set a second Avenue Southwest. We'll make it Slumlord Southwest, Avenue Southwest. Uh, I know Mr. Gene wouldn't want that around his house. I know you wouldn't want it around yours. And I know you don't want it, and I know you wouldn't want it around here, Mr. Hurt. So, or, or Scott, or anybody else for that matter. But, you know, it's just more riffraff, all it is. I'm against it. And if y'all gonna zone him, y'all zone me, I got money, I'll start building. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Now, this really is in relation to that, but not that street. I live on 3rd Avenue Southeast. I have eight housing project apartments across the street from me. Two houses down from me is a $350,000 house for sale. You know what happens when they come look at that house? The first thing they look at are those apartments over there and want to know if we've had any troubles. Well, they haven't, but I have. I've had stuff stolen out of my car, out of my shed, so that won't happen anymore because I've got a security system and, and a fence up. But I understand where they're coming from about devaluing the property. So that's just in relation. 
Thank you. Any other comments? David. Go on, brother. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, most of y'all know me. I'm David Jackson. I do not vote in Hamilton, but I have parents, elderly parents, like brother said, that live here. Uh, to give you some point of view from my standpoint, most of you know I was in the banking business for several years, and I was a certified residential appraiser from the state of Alabama. Under no circumstances by putting a storage metal building in a community like that, you're going to drive down the values of all the property around you. No ifs, ands, and buts. And I speak to that from experience in dealing uh, in the banking business and also uh, when I was a, an appraiser. And I would just ask the council to ask yourself the question, but I want this next to me. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else have a word? I just made one other comment. I mentioned right when I mentioned about uh, safety and uh, back about a month ago, my neighbor across the street from me, and they got an old house too, but it's nice. It's still Frankfurt built. It's really it's really nice inside out. But their car got the window shot out in our driveway. And that's what I was talking to Reverend when I spoke about I think it was a lot more nervous. And I, I just don't think it for safety is concerned that would help that. This would help that. I'd like to say a few words. Um, my dad lives on Baby Street and the apartments there. And I've noticed, um, like Charlie said, uh, a tremendous increase on foot traffic. They're coming from, I guess, Key Branch apartments down through there. They throw the garbage down in the street. It's littered all the time. You can go up there right now, pick up litter. Um, Baby Street and Lover's Lane used to be these streets in Hamilton as far as pretty and beautiful. They built those apartments on Lover's Lane, and it's my understanding you can talk to anybody on Lover's Lane now, and it's nothing but uh, drugs and police activity out there all the time. And we don't want that on Baby Street, but it's getting getting to that point. It, you know, the, I, I go check on my dad every day, and it's the, the foot traffic is what I see. And you can tell by looking at the type of people that go by what, what it is. Thank you. Brenda. I didn't mean to speak, but I will will speak of uh, Ricky's right about the apartments on Lover's Lane. My brother lives there. He tells me that two or three times a week at least the police have to come and it's usually drug related. As Ricky said, why add that ba baby street? We've already got that problem here. Let's not make it worse. I know this lady probably won't say nothing. <laughs> but what's talking about houses on Baby Street, she dropped the time line for a house on Baby Street. Nice, inside and out. It's great. Thank you. You want to say anything about your property or your concerns? Um, I've talked to Charles and James, and I just I agree with whatever they say. Any questions of the council? Is is anybody from the planning and zoning going to address us? Uh, there's no one here tonight from the zoning council. <laughs> Williams. 
sorry, what is currently on that property? Mm -hmm. it, it's a vacant lot. Do you have any further comments, Mr. Williams? No. Okay. We have a request. We have a lot of concerns and a petition with about 40 names or so here. This is on our agenda tonight. We um, have it in the regular meeting to recommend it come to a vote. When we get down to that, we'll decide if we want to postpone the vote uh, and table it for these considerations. Uh, we appreciate each one of you for expressing your concerns and uh, uh, we know that cities have to have a certain amount of uh, rented living. People move here that cannot buy a house and uh, nice apartments, uh, uh, something that we will continue to need throughout time. Uh, the time and the place, uh, you know, the place uh, and, and your opinion is not Baby Street for these apartments. So when the zoning board met uh, on the surface to them, it, it looked like a pretty good fit with the other multiple housing being nearby. Uh, I heard some expressions of that in the discussion. Um, the concerns about uh, safety, uh, the type of building, metal versus uh, brick and mortar, that kind of thing, uh, those concerns uh, about devaluing properties and this kind of thing were expressed. So there's a lot of considerations in this and I think we're going to have to uh, probably uh, think on this some more and maybe scratch our head a bit and uh, see what's best. Zoning issues usually have two sides because it wasn't originally that, but someone needs it to be that, and then and sometimes zoning works out. The change works out. Sometimes it doesn't. So we're just going to have to weigh the issues that we've heard and try to make as good a decision as we possibly can. And uh, I appreciate each of you for expressing yourself tonight, being honest with the council and myself, and. Uh, in all matters and uh, I really really uh, thank you for coming and uh, you're welcome to st stay for our meeting and, and you'll know the verdict to here tonight uh, whether we vote, whether we don't vote, whether we uh, vote yes or no. I mean uh, that's what councils and mayors do and we'll get down to that in a bit but well, we just want to say thank you for your visit with us tonight. We especially appreciate our board members coming by tonight and taking out their time just to thank the council and the city for the gift of the schools. So with all that said, um, I need a motion to uh, end our public hearing if there's no other comments uh, on the zoning matter. We need a motion to, to close that session of our meeting. And Mayor, just let me say, I, I, I want to repeat this. I feel like nobody back in that quarter of town wants this. Okay. Okay. We've got enough. Okay. I've got one question. Okay. The pictures from Weepy Drive, mm -hmm. do you own that property?
What is this what you're planning on building over there, up there? No. Okay. Okay. With those comments, if that if that is the final comment of our uh, public hearing, then I'd ask for a motion to end up that section of our meeting. I'll make that motion. Herb made the motion to close that section. We need to uh, have a second to that motion. I second. Gene second. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, our regularly scheduled meeting will now begin, and we will uh, recommend first that we approve the minutes of the August 17th, 2020 City Council meeting. I'll make a motion. I've got a motion. Need a second? Second. Wade, second. All in favor of approving those minutes? Thank you. Secondly, we have a, sex, a set of uh, special meeting uh, minutes for the uh, 2020 uh, September 1st election result canvassing meeting. We need to approve the minutes for that meeting also. All right, we got a motion. We need a second. Got a second. All in favor of approving that set of minutes. Thank you. Third would be a recommendation to approve our accounts payable bills for August 2020. I'll make a motion. Shane made a motion. We need a second. Tammy has made the second to pay our bills. All in favor? Thank you. Would like to make the announcement that of the hiring of uh, Kaylee Mason as a part-time aide to our city library here in Hamilton, and I'd like to recommend I'd like to make a recommendation that we pay Kaylee Mason seven dollars and twenty-five cents per hour for that position at the library. Should somebody leave, or are we just getting an extra somebody? Yes, somebody leaves. We lost I'll make her. Make a motion on both of them. All right, we got, we got, got, Gene has made the motion, we need a second. Herb made the second, all in favor. Thank you. Um, now item six has to do with the recommendation to approve rezoning the property discussed at the public hearing on 2nd Avenue, known as Baby Street, Changing this property from R1 residential zone to an R2 multifamily dwelling zone. Is the council ready to bring this to a vote or do you want to table this motion? We've got a motion to table this for tonight and think on it. Any second? I'll second. Got a second. Those in favor of tabling this motion for, for now? You abstain? You, you abstain? Okay. Wade has a conflict of interest in this matter, so he's abstaining. The majority recommend that we postpone the meeting, uh, the uh, voting. Okay. Excuse me, let me ask you. What? We uh, had already voted over there, not voted on this here, so why are we voting over here to take the list? This first was a public hearing. We was hearing from everybody. Yeah, this why. is where we would either vote to do it or not vote it. This was? Yeah, and we're going to table the matter. We'll it, vote next time. It, to vote on it next time? We're going to consider it some more before we take a vote on it. We're going to consider all that we've heard here tonight before we, by voting to yeah, post the table. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Item 7 is a recommendation to revisit and amend the partial closing of Carbon Circle due to complaints from adjoining property owners. We thought we had heard from all the property owners when we did this uh, partial closing a few weeks ago. Comes a person who actually owns his mother's house on this circle 
who did not receive notification, he says. So, Scott, I need a little advice on what we might or might not to do about this. Yes, sir. we had just uh, voted to close that street. Uh, we did not vacate it, so we had closed it, so we can just reopen it back up. Uh, okay. There's nothing been done uh, physically along the property and on the street, uh, so my recommendation would be to just reopen it and make, make that a city street. Okay, did he not pay? Just reopen the street and leave it open for the time being. Yes, sir. Okay. Herbert made a motion that would do that exact thing, and let's just go back to the way it was. I second it. We got a second. Any other discussion on that matter? Those in favor of, of placing it back to the original, raise your right hand, please. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, that concludes our business tonight. Folks, we're going to just consider what we've heard here tonight. Uh, we've got a request, uh, a man wanting to build a new building that will house uh, five one-bedroom apartments. We've got opposition to the matter. Uh, we're going to take this into consideration. Yes, sir, Rick. One, one thing, that, that acreage is point four, four tenths of an acre. Is, is according to the GIS maps. So that's not a very big spot for five. Yeah, it's uh, 93 feet by 186 feet. That's the exact dimensions of it, which is a parcel of an acre. Yeah, it's going to take a lot there of room. There is enough land there for the building itself based on the zoning ordinance but I'm not sure that they figured in the parking. For the building only, there is enough land there, but there's no notation of the parking lot in these minutes, so I don't know that they took into consideration the restrictions of the parking and how much land is required on either side and, and the difference in the terminology of the streets and everything but the actual plot of land does fit the building. Okay, if there's no other items of business tonight, we'd ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. Oh wait, I have oh. a request okay. of you and the police department to start working the crosswalks in the morning. Crosswalks? For the school for the high school between First Baptist Church and the high school. That's the one I'm familiar with and there hasn't been an officer there and there's kids coming from the parking lot and, and parking in surrounding areas and trying to get across. They're lining up a little earlier in the mornings because they have to line up and, and go through their routine, but there's no officer there and it's just, you know, it is dangerous because there's cars going in three directions and and, and I'm not familiar with the, the main cross there. At I saw our Coast cruiser Coast. out in front of the school where the bus is turning. I think we're okay. still working that. Maybe. They were gone this morning. I went, they weren't there at 724 and then when I came back through at 740 there was no sign but there hasn't been an officer there at the hospital. So I'll, I'll address that matter. Okay. Sure will. Any other items? If not, then we'd call for a motion to adjourn. Got a motion? Got a second? All in favor? Thank you. Appreciate y'all coming out tonight.
Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com backslash 49 TV.